Hello, in this video we're going to be reviewing hot strings. I use AutoHotKey to uh, search. It, it basically when you, it allows you to type a couple letters and have whatever you want put up. But there's actually a lot of other uses, and, and that's why I realized I use them in a lot of different ways. And what I thought is I I put um, I put these in Word. Granted, I'm, I'm, the actual script is running in AutoHotKey, and I have um, a lot more than what I'm showing here. But these are some examples that I wanted to show you. So this can really save you a lot of time. Let's say like you uh, you typically type. Um, this part right here. This this is what I normally end up typing in SPSS because I need to export something. Well, I can just type export period space, and it throws in like what was after this, right? So by typing this this by the way, if if uh, the format is normally something close to this, where you have two colons, the word. Um, and then usually followed by a period or something, and then another two colons, and that basically says take everything after that. And when you find this first part here, I should have included the period there, but export period, replace export period with this. So this allows me again. I can type export period space, and when I hit space, is when it does the replacement. Um, the next one, let's say I'm going to do variable labels uh, in SPSS, and I, you know, I'll be trying to add labels, and I have to go through and try and type you know, like this, and go backspace, and then put in um, whatever one is, and then, okay, two, and three, right, and especially if there's a lot, it's it's time consuming. So, so I can just type VL, oop, I can't type VL, apparently, I can type BL, VL <laughs> period space, and bam, right, I'm pre-configured, so what I would do is, let's say I only had ten, then I can just go back, get rid of the ones I didn't want, right, did not need. Uh, it's still, it's much, much faster. It does support Unicode text, so here I can say, um, this is for a uh, um, check, thank you. So it, it'll put in there um, in the right format. And um, what what you'll notice over time is, uh, for the most part, I usually have like a three-letter abbreviation, um, and then followed by a period, so I keep mine pretty standardized, and, uh, and it help, really helps me remember, because I have... I th I think at least several hundred um, abbreviations, and what I also started doing was doing patterns, um, which I think you'll you'll notice later on. But uh, so let's say I um, you can install Auto Hotkey on a thumb drive, so I can take it anywhere with me. So let's say I wanted to have a distribution list, right? So here I can say this is the Joe distribution list. Of course, I'd never have this because it's just all me. Um, but these were a bunch of different of my email addresses, right? I've already pre-configured, so it's very easy for me to edit it. I don't have to go create a distribution list. I don't have to remember the address. I can just type a couple letters, and it would put it in as much as I want. Uh, or in in SQL, I'm constantly trying to remember this is the, actually the field that I use for our last transaction date. And then I, what I want to say is it's, it's within a year of the current date minus this interval of 12 months, which basically means that the date that I'm searching for is within 12 months of today's or the, the, the current date. So I can say last transaction date ra that range for me is what that stands for. Oh, and I did grab in the wrong one. Um, I have another abbreviation in, in my actual code running this, so um, I don't remember exactly what that abbreviation is, but um, I'm not going to jump over there to show you that, because so, let's move on to the next one. So this is simple re word replacement, right? So we're done with that one. Now let's say um, you have certain tags or something that you want to, when I do the replacement, I want to end up right here, because that's where I'm going to have to add something. So I can say... This, that stands for a hide column, by the way, the HC period, and see how it dumped me right in here? And this is how it did it. It said go left four. So if you count from the very last thing, one, two, three, four, right, that's how it knew to dump me in there. I'll do the next one. Um, so I have a hide column script, I have a hide row script, right, and then basically for SPSS, I'd put the name of the row, and it would it would hide that row after the script had run. Um, now let's say if you were doing HTML, right, and I can never remember this, so I can so so here's my standardized, right? I can say C for color, C black, and now it dumps me right in the middle of my tag. It, it um, properly open and close the tags for me, or C gray, right? It'll throw me in there, and I have I think about a dozen different colors coded for me. I just showed a couple here, um, or let's say you want to search for, you have a big word file that has a, a lot of um, email addresses uh, spread throughout it. So I, I created a file here that has some, 
So you can see, and they're not hyperlinked, of course, but you can see there's one here, there's one here. Um, so let's say I wanted to do find, and um, I should have not done that, but I'm going to say it's word search replace, I think, yeah. Um, but then, you know what? I think, and actually i got to go fix my hot string, but this is what it should have put up there. So make sure you check these wildcards, you f find all, and notice it found all of them. Um, and you could use this, I've done this where I find over a thousand at a time, and somewhere up in here, I know it's a little tricky, I don't know, um, you gotta, once you find them, you can copy and then paste just the email addresses. Um, so that comes in very handy, but the point being, let's get back to this document, um, the point being, I don't want to have to go find where I did this before and, and figure out where I had saved it or look at an old file. I can have it in three letters and have it pop up um, standardized. So, or let's say I had something actually bigger. So, so now we're on the paragraph replacements, right? So, um, this, I, it's right here, the O, so the O, and I should have clarified that earlier. So when there's an O in there, the O doesn't have a space at the end of it. On, on the other stuff I was showing you, like um, like my, my emails, right? When you type an email address, generally speaking, you don't want a, a space at the end. So, so so if I hit Joe Gmail period space, notice there's no space after it. But if I type something like um, TI, oh, I guess I don't have that one with uh, <laughs> set with it. Um, <clears throat> but if you don't have that O in there, it'll add a space automatically to it. So in this example, and in this one that's sending it raw, which which means it'll put in all the formatting and everything. Um, it doesn't care, it just sends everything that's in this. So, because when I used to work in survey research work, I would often... Oops. Come on. Oh, I don't know why I'm... Duh. Alright, I should have been typing thank you this. And notice, because I had the caps locked on, it replaced them all in caps. It does... Um, check for that. Oh, I'm on he my heading one is set to be capitalized. Let me get out of this. So, so now it'll put this in here, right? So this is actually um, in HTML, um, telling it so it would bold and underline the thank you for taking our survey, right? But I don't have to go find this anywhere. It's automatically dumped in there, and that that it can be you know one paragraph, several paragraphs. Like this, uh, my next one here. So, so this is how I remember is join my samples table, um, and it just dumped all of that in there for me. Um, I'm not sure how I got onto orange text. That's just uh, formatting in Word, but but I I can join, and I think my other ones are um, join dot e store right. So I have these pre-configured, and they they set up some of my joins for me in SQL automatically. Um, um, or let's say you have to have line breaks in a certain way. So when I'm programming surveys, oop, sorry, that's an I. So this would be my scale, right? It instantly put a not and a line break, important, into the line break, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, and then very line break more. Um, and survey goes from agree. So this is my strongly agree to disagree scale. Uh, but it's easy to keep it standardized. You don't have to go copy it and borrow it from anywhere. So it's very, very quick and easy. Let's say you had more than um, just a couple paragraphs. You had a lot of stuff, right? So, um, and I'm going to create a new one. So, but honestly, I don't use this enough. Let me grab this so I can have it on my other page. Come on. Okay. So if I type SQL dot temp, um, it just grabbed, and you can see quite a bit of text and dumped it in here for me. And it did that because over here, it actually, I told it to go read whatever this file is here, copy to the clipboard, and then send play, which just means send, and this caret here, that means control. So send control V. So basically it's telling it to paste. Go read this file, copy to the clipboard, and then paste it wherever I am. And you can see how fast and easy I pulled up, what is that, uh, uh, six pages of stuff here um, that I use all the time, right? So it makes it very, very easy for me to go grab my template um, as of as much long as you want. And there are other ways you can actually grab rich text format as well if you wanted to. So there's that one. 
often I have certain words that I want to have capitalized, like I, I work with SPSS a lot, and let me, I'm still in the, I'm, I'm in the stupid, uh, I'll type it down here. So if I type SPSS lowercase, it'll uppercase it for me, right, or WebEx, it puts it in, in the correct capitalization. I think I have Python as well, I'm not showing it, but you can see how easy it is to make you um, look smarter because you're d doing things correctly and it just looks a lot better. Alright, let's get rid of that. Um, another cool one I use is uh, for path for folders that I access a lot. So let me, up and let me open up and explore our window here. And what this allows you to do is to, let's say if I'm up here, I can say p.icon and it'll jump me right to this path. So see this path right here, b progs icons, and that's what this was. Oh, and look at that, I don't have the, the R. So when I do this next one, um, I'm going to put in progs auto hotkey underscore L, and this, this tick mark in the R, the tick mark is what's over the tilde, or I'm sorry, under the tilde, it's the lowercase of the tilde, next to the number one in your upper left hand side of your keyboard. Um, now watch what happens when I type uh, AHK, it looks like. P dot AHK. I don't type that one very often, so I, I can't remember it. So P dot AHK. Instantly, I don't even have to hit enter, right? It jumped me right to it. Um, and P dot WK drops me to this folder, right? So it's very quick and easy. Um, the I have a P here, so I remember these are all paths, so that way I can have a P so for the paths, and then a, a two or three letter, or sometimes the whole word, if it's a sh you know four letters, but I'll still remember. So what's great is you program them to what works for you, right? What makes sense to you. Um, or let's say you want to have it where it launches programs. So so I can type p dot spy, and it actually see this program. It just launched because of this. P dot spy tells it to go run this program. And this um, doesn't matter what this program is, but you can have it trigger off anything, right? It's it's just handy because you can have you can type something and have it launch a program for you. Hot keys are normally what are used for that, but sometimes you know you just might want to have it where uh, you type a couple letters. Um, and and what I also want to put out is these are context sensitive. So if I open up SPSS here and I go to a syntax window and I type R period space, notice it starts with the backslash and then has asterisks ending in a period, right? SPSS, that's how I can comment out a whole line. And let me do it one more time, because I'll show you also where my, see where my uh, cursor is? So it's what, it'll, it allows me to build a nice looking comment here. Um, but what if I was uh, in an, an auto hotkey window? Ooh. Sorry, I just clicked on it and it disappeared. Where did you go? Well, I yeah, and it's still gone. Maybe it's back here somewhere. Wow. Okay, I'll open a new window. Maybe no, and that's not working. Of course. Okay, that is crazy. I'm um, sorry, it just disappeared on me. So, I can I can still, I guess, I can do this in here. Um, but I'm going to do it down here. So, I'm not in SPSS, and now when I type R period space, nothing happens. What is going on? Hold on. Okay, so now I got my auto hotkey. This is site, by the way. Um, that's the editor I use for it. So now when I'm in site and I hit R period space, notice it doesn't start with the backslash. It starts with the semicolon and there's no period at the end, right? Whereas an auto hotkey, it had those. So, and the reason why that's happening is over here, I told it, hey, when you're in site, um, replace it with the semicolon at the beginning. Um, and, and jump over left, but over here, and don't end in a period, whereas this one I did. And you can just build into it to say, if a certain window is active, if SPSS is active,
do one thing. If a different window is active, and this is the class, which means like the uh, the uh, kind of object type of thing of what program's running, um, do something different. And I have another one that actually does it for Python because Python um, uses something else, and my SQL one also comments out things differently. So I don't have to remember different abbreviations for each um, program I'm in. I can just hit R period and hit space, and then it will add that for me, whatever, it adds the appropriate one, whichever one I'm in. Uh, and just for some fun here, you can also do some sort of system variables, right? So let's say I wanted to have it where I could type v date, and it will replace with the current date. Um, in, in, in this is where I'm also telling it the long date format. You could have it put in um, the time as well, whatever you want, right? It's it's very easy to customize, but he gets back to you're hitting a couple keys and it's instantly putting up you know information that you'd want so the next one is here my computer name so Godzilla happens to be the name of this computer um, or the location of where my documents are right some of my computers like this I put mine in, in a kind of an odd spot on this computer system C users Joe personal um, do, so it's e nice because depending on what computer you're on, you may not where the, know where those things are, it may be hard to find out, you could have the OS version, other things it's nice to show you. Um, or let's say I want to see how long has it been since I've rebooted. So it's been a little bit over 20 hours, we're almost to 21 hours. Um, and that's just taking, this This is, tells it how long it's been rebooted, but it's in the, I think it's called milliseconds or whatever, but you have to divide it up by a thousand, get it up to to um, to seconds to minutes to an hour, and then I just rounded it to one decimal. I know that doesn't quite make sense as far as for time goes, but uh, close enough for per system what we need. Um, another cool thing. Let me see. Oh, did I close it? Um, I have a script. Let me see if I can remember where where I keep it because uh, it's just kind of fun and basically allows you to just type and do some math wherever you are. Test hot strings, I think that's the name of it. There we go. So I'm going to launch it. And now watch. I'll be in Word. I could be in whatever program. And I can say 5 plus 5 equals 10. Look at that. 10 divided by 3 equals 3.3. .3. Right? 3, or sorry, 4,000 times. Ooh, I don't. I think times was a little bit different. I think I have to use an X. Four thousand times five thousand equals a lot. Um, so you can see I could do that. I'm doing that in Word, right? Let me see if I can come over here into my um, site window. I'm going to create a new window just to make sure here. So five times five equals 25. Look at that. Um, so you can basically have a calculator wherever you are in whatever program. Um, the other thing I have running, by the way, is a spell check that, uh, let me see if I can pull it up here real quick. It it goes across, uh, um, it's always running in every program, and there we go. And it, uh, it works in every program, and it's going across thousands, so these are all the things, so these are, these are the ones I've added, because I always spell them incorrectly. Um, but you can put in whatever you want, right? So it looks for would of, and replaces would have. Um, so it helps you <laughs> be grammatically better, but also spell, you know, it's the normal spell check, as well as a lot of other additional things. And this runs in, in my instant messenger. Um, in my email, in Word, in whatever I'm doing, even SPSS, right? E everywhere, it automatically is running and is constantly um, making me look a little bit smarter. Okay, that's it. Thank you.